So what we're going to talk about in this lecture are pressure gauges and that is how we measure pressure. Now there are two types of pressure that we can measure. There's absolute pressure and relative pressure. Relative pressure is the type of pressure that we measure most commonly on the Earth's surface because we're inside the Earth's atmosphere. And a relative pressure is where we measure the pressure relative to some other pressure. So for example, when we say that a car tire is inflated to two or three atmospheres, we mean two or three atmospheres of pressure above atmospheric pressure, or another way of saying that is relative to atmospheric pressure. The reason for that is if you say that a car's got tire has got no pressure in it, what you mean is not that it's got a vacuum, you mean that it's at atmospheric pressure, which is you know, the case if you have a flat tire. Now, the reason we have an absolute pressure is because the universe defines an absolute zero of pressure. Because even absolute pressures, we measure it in a relative way. The difference being that if you've got an absolute zero of pressure, which is a vacuum with no material and no energy in it, because even photons will exert a pressure on objects, so our vacuum defines the absolute zero of energy, and if you measure your pressure relative to this absolute zero of vacuum, that gives you what we call an absolute pressure. Now, how do we measure a pressure? Well, we have already learnt that the pressure in a liquid depends on the depth of the liquid and the pressure acting on the surface. And this is what gives us a great way to measure a pressure difference between two uh, different surfaces of a liquid. Because the pressure difference between two different surfaces of a liquid is going to depend entirely on the different heights uh, of fluid between those uh, surfaces of the liquid. And so by doing that, we can convert a pressure measurement into a length measurement. So to see how we're going to do that, let's look at a little demo that we're going to do, um, which is how high can you suck water up a straw? Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a bottle of water and it's connected to a very long straw that stretches up above us to a height well over 10 meters. And what we're going to try is see how high people can suck water up this extremely long straw. Okay, I think that's my limit. <laughs> so, who wants to have a go? <laughs> you want to have a try? It's hard. <laughs> Is that your limit? Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's the limits for, for humans uh, pulling water up. What we're going to do now is try a vacuum pump and see how high that can get the water to go. So as you can see, even the pump cannot get the water all the way to the top of the pipe, no matter how hard it sucks. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try 
lowering the end of the pipe, pulling the water all the way to the end and see if we can pull up the pipe with the water inside it. Okay, so we're gonna make one last attempt to pull the water up to the second floor here. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna suck on the hose, now it's down at the same level as the bottle, and we're gonna fill the pipe with water. Then we're gonna clamp the end of the pipe right up to the point where it's filled with water, and we're then gonna haul the clamped pipe full of water, and we're gonna haul it up and see if we can get the water all the way to the second floor. So here we go. Okay, so that's the pipe now, full of water. We're gonna clamp it here and then try and haul it up to the second floor. Okay, so what you can see now is that even though we had the tube full of fluid, as we pulled the tube up, the water level has risen to about here. You can see a few little air bubbles and uh, trapped fluid beyond that, but the continuous level stops about here. What we've actually made is something called a barometer. The pressure above here is a vacuum, and what is actually causing the water to rise up here, despite uh, what people believe, which is that you're sucking the water up, all you're doing is you're sucking the air out from above the fluid. Then atmospheric pressure on the ground pushes water into the straw, and this is why the water rises, because you're creating a vacuum or near vacuum above the water, and atmospheric pressure is pushing the water into the tube. But as we know, the pressure of a fluid depends on the depth of the fluid, and once the pressure difference between the top surface of the fluid, which has a vacuum, and the bottom is one atmosphere of pressure, the water will not rise anymore, even if we pull the tube, because all you will end up with is a vacuum and then water below it. And as the atmospheric pressure changes, the water level in the tube will move up and down. So what we've actually made here is something called a barometer that you can use to measure atmospheric pressure. Now normally, you don't make barometers out of water because you need a 10 meter height in order to be able to measure one atmosphere of pressure. Instead, you use a far denser liquid like mercury, which only needs um, less than a meter or slightly more than a meter in order to measure pressures that are comparable to one atmosphere. So that's it for our demonstration of a very long straw. So now, We've seen that when we try to suck water up a straw, there is an absolute limit to how high we can suck it up. And that limit depends on atmospheric pressure. And so we said that we'd now created a barometer when we'd actually uh, you know, sucked all the air out of the top of the straw. So to see how we can use this barometer to measure absolute pressure of atmosphere, let's have a look at a diagram on the computer. Okay, so here we have a more typical barometer. And this is one using a more dense fluid, like for example, mercury, um, because it's not gonna be incredibly tall like our long straw demo. So what have we got here? Well, what we wanna do is we wanna consider the pressure at this point here and this point here. Now the pressure at these two points must be equal. We must have an equal pressure because if there was no, uh, uh, if there was a difference in the pressure, what would happen is fluid would flow from one point to the other. But what we're looking at here is the equilibrium um, condition where there's no fluid flowing. And so we know that the pressure in these two points has to be equal to prevent any fluid flow. So if we look at the pressure here, what we have acting on the surface of this uh, uh, liquid is atmospheric pressure. So I'll write that as P atm. Now, if we look at the pressure of the liquid here, the pressure P is just the pressure on the surface, so that's P atm plus rho gh. 
where rho is the density of the liquid and h is the height. Well, the height of the liquid here is zero, so this term, of course, doesn't matter, and we get the result that we already knew, that the pressure of the liquid here is just atmospheric pressure. Well, now let's look at the pressure of the liquid here. Now, here we're going to look at this long uh, tube above it. So here, what we're going to have is our pressure is the pressure at the surface, well, the pressure at the surface of this tube is vacuum, and that's what we've defined as zero pressure on the absolute scale. So we have no pressure here for the vacuum, and then we're going to add to that rho times g times h. Now, we started this off by saying that these two pressures have to be equal, and so if we join these two equations together, we get that atmospheric pressure is equal to rho times g times h. Now, these density and the gravitational field are known, so we know these two quantities. We just go out and measure them for a particular liquid, and we know the gravitational field for Earth. And so what happens is if we measure the height, which we can do here, so we just simply get a ruler and measure the height of liquid that is supported by the atmospheric pressure outside, we measure that, and this gives us the atmospheric pressure. So this is a pressure gauge that effectively compares the atmospheric pressure to vacuum. But of course vacuum is the absolute zero on the pressure scale, and so this essentially gives us the absolute value of atmospheric pressure. And this is how a barometer measures atmospheric pressure. And had we left the long straw demo up, then as atmospheric pressure goes up and down over time, we'd find that the height of the um, water in the straw would go up and down by uh, according to the atmospheric pressure because the two are directly related to one another because the density and the gravitational field are constant. So that's the physics behind a barometer. So as we've seen, a barometer is a great way to measure an absolute pressure. But as we talked about at the start of this lecture, that's not always what we want to do. Sometimes we want to measure a pressure difference, such as when we're inflating a car tire. So to do that, again, we want to use our length measurement to determine a pressure difference. And we have a different type of pressure gauge, which is called a manometer, which will do that. So to see how a manometer works, let's go and have a look at it on the computer. So what we've got here is a diagram of a different type of pressure gauge called a manometer. And this is used to compare two pressures. The two pressures that we're going to compare are P1 here and P2, and so you apply P1 to this arm of the manometer, and you apply P2 to the other arm of the manometer. And then what you do is you measure the difference between these two heights of the liquid in order to get a measure of the pressure difference between P1 and P2. So how does this work? Well, the system is going to be in equilibrium, and so this means that there's no fluid flowing. And so what that means is that the pressure at this point here, whether we use this arm to calculate it or this arm to calculate it, must be the same, because if there was a difference here, that would imply that there's some fluid flowing from one arm to the other. So let's use our static pressure formula for this side. So the pressure at the bottom at that point x is going to be equal to the surface pressure that's applied, so that's P1, and then we add to that the density of the fluid times the gravitational field strength times the height of the fluid above that point. Right, so this is rho times g times h1. On this side, we can look at the pressure at that point x, and this side it's equal to P2, which is the pressure that's acting on the surface of the fluid, and then we add to that rho times g, and then this time it's h2. Now, these two pressures have to be equal. So if we combine these two equations, what we're going to have is that P1 plus rho times g times h1 is equal to P2 plus rho times g times h2. So what we can do now is 
rearrange this equation. So if I rearrange this, remembering that I'm wanting to compare one pressure to the other, we're now measuring a relative pressure, not an absolute pressure, then when I do that, I can uh, rearrange this as um, P2 minus P1, right, is equal to, and then if I do it this way around, I'm going to have rho G H1 minus rho G H2. So I can rewrite this as delta P, so that's the pressure difference between the two arms of the manometer, and that's going to be equal to rho G times delta H, where this is the height difference between the arms of the manometer. And depending on which way around you've measured this, I've carefully arranged it so it's going to give me a positive number here, and that will give me a positive pressure difference here, because, of course, P1 is greater than P2, which is why the fluid level on this side is lower down, because the larger pressure has pushed it lower. So what we've essentially done now is we can measure the height difference between the arms of the manometer, and that gives us the pressure difference between the pressures attached to the manometer. So again, we've turned, we've used our static pressure formula to convert a pressure measurement into a length measurement. So we've seen it here on the computer in theory, so let's see how manometer works and looks in practice. So here we have the device that we've just been looking at on the computer uh, for measuring a pressure difference between two sides. So this device is called a manometer, and it measures the pressure difference between this tube and this tube. When I blow on uh, this plastic tube here, it will increase the pressure on this side and force the water down here and up here. And this side, of course, is connected to the atmosphere. And so by measuring the height difference between this side and this side, we can calculate the pressure difference. And so we're measuring a relative pressure versus atmospheric pressure here. So that's a positive pressure difference. The other thing I can do is I can suck and generate a negative pressure difference. And so this is a uh, manometer. And the principles of measuring pressure that we've discussed in this unit, both the barometer and the manometer here, are the basic principles behind almost all modern pressure measurements. Um, typically now with uh, barometers, you have what are called aneroid barometers, which actually use a little sealed air sac. They don't use water like we demonstrated. Um, they use a sealed uh, air sac connected to gears that turns uh, a, a dial or is connected to uh, an electronic readout. So that's it for pressure gauges. Um, last, uh, in fluid statics, we're going to be talking about buoyancy.